Hello and welcome to this episode of the Star Wars Universe podcast. Today, myself and Ashley Coffin are talking about The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 6, Guns for Hire. All that and more after a commercial break we have no control over. Welcome back. My name is Matthew. I'm your host. And Ashley... It is about damn time <laughs> that we use our kung fu skills as pandas <laughs> to talk about this incredible episode, or at, at least a uh, very special episode of Mandalorian. <laughs> how, how are you doing? And uh, what'd you think of uh, what we saw tonight? Um, it, I actually like. I really did love it. It was a lot of fun. We had a lot of mm-hmm. guest stars. It was a very star-studded <laughs> red carpet yep. event, uh, and I was there for all of the people. Like. You can put Jack Black in absolutely anything, and I will be happy. He's my favorite. Yeah. And uh, he did not disappoint. It was, you know, a like, small role, but it was fine. I wouldn't have thought of Jack Black and Lizzo as a great couple, but then once I saw them on screen, I was like, yeah, totally. No, of course, they're perfect for each other. Like, this is so good. And I don't know how many acting things Lizzo did or has done, mm-hmm. but, you know, she was fine. She did good. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, like, there's a This was a weird episode because I thought there was a lot of kind of like silly, campy, as someone described it, this is the campiest episode of uh, Law and Order that you'll ever see, (laughs) which I didn't think the the Law and Order part was pretty good. And then we got some like incredible character development at the end. Um, Yes, we did. uh, Which, uh, yeah, which, you know, as Bo-Katan stands, I think we're kind of happy with, but we'll, we'll have some thoughts on. There's some complications to be sure. But just like... I don't know. I I love that Star Wars is something that, like, when I was a kid, I don't know if you had this too, there was still definitely the sense of, like, you know, the older actors, the people in Hollywood, they, they still kind of look down on it. And it was like, maybe they're going to be in it. You know, and Alec Guinness, who played the original yes, Obi-Wan. Grumpy Pants. He, <laughs> grumpy Pants. He very famously, like, hated that he was doing it. Know. Um, <clears throat> you know, and now we're at a time where I think, like, Most of the actors who are in their, like, 20s, 30s, 40s, even 50s grew up with this stuff. Mm -hmm. And, Even older, as we saw with Christopher Lloyd. I was like, oh, my God. (laughs) Christopher Lloyd's in this, too. Doc Brown. They got... And I... Like, I know Jack Black is a huge fan. I think I remembered something about Lizzo being like, Grogu is so cute. I just want to hold him. Well, she got her fish. And he loved her just like It was very cute. It was very fun. It was very fun. Uh... So just to remind those who who don't know the story here, basically, for those of you who know role-playing games, this is the pure definition of a side quest. Yeah, uh, I love it, a good I, Mando side quest episode, though. <laughs> I don't think that's filler. I think it's very different. And I'll talk about the definition in a bit. But, like, you know, it's there's something that they need. <clears throat> and in order to get the something they need, the people who have the thing they need are like, cool, but you have to do this favor for me first. If you played World of Warcraft, you've played any of those role-playing games, you've played any of those kind of games, this is a thing that happens a lot. Dungeons and Dragons. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Like, or just, you know, video games. And frankly, especially in television shows, I think it kind of helps. I think if everything is always just the main plot, then that should be a four-episode series, probably. Like, it's hard to sustain that. I didn't mind this. I thought it was great. So they get to this planet, the, the Duchess, the, uh, I, I don't know if Jack Black's the Duke, but I, he's her consort or whatever. The two of them are the rulers, and they're having this problem. They, the Mando and Bo-Katan go off to solve the problem. Because they're able to solve the problem, um, they come back. Lizzo and, and, and the Duke are like, great, this is awesome. Um, Christopher Lloyd helps them uh, on the side quest, and they say, okay, so we're now going to give you access to go talk to the Mandalorians. And then <clears throat> Bo-Katan and Din get to talk to the Mandalorians. And, and that's where, again, there's this great scene where it's mostly the Mandalorians who Bo-Katan, like, almost was the leader of, but couldn't because she couldn't get the Darksaber. They're led by this guy named Axe. He kind of doesn't really trust her leadership to begin with. But um, Din is really able to kind of be like, no, this is the person who should be your leader she he gives her the dark saber. She claims it. She acknowledges that like this is who she should be. And the Mandalorians say like, "Yep, you're you're our gal." When that fight happened a couple episodes ago, I absolutely thought that I was like, and not only yeah. did she hold it, she wielded it perfectly. <clears throat> she didn't have any of the you know tribulations that he did. 
And yeah. I was just, when he started to say it, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And I don't even and, care that this has become like the Mandalorian slash Bo-Katan show. I am so here for it. I really right? am. Just first uh, clarifying. So what Ashley's talking about there is if you remember the episode with basically the Russian nesting doll of techno droid thing, it was like the spider monster and the side of spider monster inside a smaller one. <laughs> and Mando tries to fight it, is defeated. Grogu goes back to get Bo-Katan. Bo-Katan can use the dark saber in a way that he can't. And so Dan is basically able to be like, look, by the logic, like I got defeated by this thing. Bo-Katan defeated that thing and she used the dark saber to do it. So the dark saber is hers. The leadership is hers. Um, and let's kind of just, I, we can go back to the fun campiness of it. Let's kind of dive into that. So one of the things I'm seeing online already is this attitude of like, oh, so is the dark saber meaningless? All this, why do we get all this build up? What? Why do you think it worked? I don't. I, like I, I worked in terms not in terms of like why did it work in the story, but like for you as a viewer, like why did this feel satisfying? Well, I've if it did. been it like it on her side <laughs> since we met her mm -hmm. and not watching the Clone Wars or being attached to her in any other way. Like, this is my introduction to this character. And I have. Yeah, I did have, you know, as I've said, I watched Battlestar Galactica. So I am partial to Katie. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just really have thought that her story where we've been going through the thing is almost as interesting as Din Djarin's story in being able to like unite her people and maybe take her world back. And I really like where we're getting there with her character. So her being like, I didn't want to join up with this because of like religious reasons mm -hmm. or the easiest way I'm going to say it, you know, things like that, but not taking the saber because of same reasons. Like we bring it up all the time at some point. It's like, just get over that and take it. Yeah. He's give, like, we're, we're there. And I thought that, her actually winning it back is so much better than her yeah. just taking it back or them having to fight because I didn't want to see them fight. I didn't want to. Yeah. I, no, I totally agree. And I, I'm i reading a lot into this. And I, I <clears throat> maybe I'm, I'm projecting on it. You can tell me if you don't think I'm wrong. <laughs> but I think there's so much nuance here in the story that's being told that a lot of people are missing. Because how I read it was she started in a place of thinking, I want to be a leader. If I have the dark saber, then I am the leader, which is a, it is what was the mythology, mm -hmm. but it's a fairly flawed one, you know, and as in some of the stuff that you haven't seen, but that we've talked about, like Darth Maul, you know, one of the most evil by some definite, yeah, by most, I mean, He's pretty a, a pretty evil. horrible I'm person, okay with that. pretty horrible person. Yeah, exactly. Like they, Sam Whitmer makes him very sympathetic in some ways, but he's still pretty awful. He wins the Darksaber, so he now gets to rule. And other terrible people have gotten to rule. Yeah. And so she has seen that happen. And also, in those couple of weeks she spent with the Armorer, two other things have happened. One, she has come into her own as a leader and had people recognize her leadership and affirm her leadership. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, as we've talked about before, the Children of the Watch, the Armorer, Din... All of them had their very strict set of rules. And then her and her other group, the Night Owls and all those kind of folks and the, the people like Axe, they had their own set of very strict rules. And last week she saw the armor come to a compromise, not, mm -hmm. not, but come to a place of like, here are the rules, but now I have new information, new things are happening. <clears throat> Let's adjust things. Let's, these aren't written in stone. We can make adjustments to them. And so to me, what's happening in that moment was... Instead of her saying, instead of Bo saying, I need the Darksaber so I can become a leader, she's accepting that she is a leader, that she's become a leader, and therefore she has earned the Darksaber. D does that make sense? You oh, know, instead 100%. of it like. Yeah, because you could see it on her face. She didn't want to take it originally because she was like, ugh, this isn't the right way that I have been taught yeah. to do it. And you're just screaming, like, girl, no, that's not what you stand for. But this way is just so much more of a clean. Yeah. Yes. And she beat that guy like she really did. Mm -hmm. Twice. Yeah, she she won the fight and she yeah, it just it 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 to me is such a great growth for her character. And and I also thought for his because he had to me what we saw at the end of last season was I think all this stuff about the saber is stupid. I don't want to be a Mandalore. I don't want to rule I I want to be a Mandalorian, but I don't want to try to take back a planet. You have it. Right. 
Whereas now it's, I feel like he has come to respect it. He has come to respect her. And so he's now saying, I want you to have this because you deserve this. Yeah. And that to me is also, it's his growth. And like the dark saber is probably one of my favorite things to come out of the show. Like, you know how mm -hmm. I am about things like that. And I just yeah. love it. I love like he's gotten better with it, but just the way that she was able to pick it up and wield it. You're like, oh, no, that belongs to you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know if anyone has done this, but sometime it, it might be need some alcohol is needed. <laughs> but just to have you watch the few episodes of the animated stuff that are about the Darksaber. Yeah. I, and a lot of them is with Bo-Katan, with uh, Katie still giving her voice. And I think you would really enjoy those episodes. With, with, you, did you say with a lot of alcohol? <laughs> yeah. yeah you know. I could try. <laughs> I'll just Who knows? We'll I, see. So I do have this like weird fun fact that's not completely checked out. But I told you recently I've been watching, uh, rewatching Game of Thrones. Yeah. So the prince of the little frog fish guy character at the beginning sounded exactly mm -hmm. like uh, Dean Charles Chapman, who is Tommen Baratheon. It was oh, just the wow. way he was singing it. So <sighs> I went to his IMDb and there was nothing listed. But what was listed is that he is going to be a part of the Acolyte series. And I don't believe in coincidences. <laughs> oh, that seems very Isn't possible. that crazy? That seems... So he is listed as being in as mm -hmm. an unlisted, like whatever, as whatever the, the Acolyte series is. But I've just I just listened to him so many times be like, but I love you. You know, then that yeah. Tom and Baratheon sweet voice. And I watched mm -hmm. the credits and it didn't go into who any of the other voices were. And that's as far as it took. So listeners, if, if anybody finds out right in. I would love yeah. to know because that's as far as my look went into it because it's not listed. But we know okay. that Star Wars shows always do things with people that aren't listed. Yeah. But no, I that thought it was be... weird that he's like going to be in the Acolyte series. Yeah. I mean, because that's going to be set 200 years before this. And they certainly were playing him as though he's a teenager. But then, you know, Grogu is a toddler at 50. So all species age in different ways. I I'm or glad you brought that up. Using the voice for they're like, mm -hmm. just do this for free, Tom yeah. Baratheon. <laughs> I I loved that little amphibious Romeo and Juliet story we got at the beginning. Yeah. Um for, for those who uh, haven't seen before, you know, obviously one of them is from Admiral Akbar's uh, species, the Mon Calamari, the other <laughs> from the Quarren, who we've seen before a couple of times. In the Clone Wars, we learned that they live on the same planet and their people have been at war for generations. So yes. that's even more so oh, why the... Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah, so it's a real, like, Romeo and Juliet, you know, in she fair... She made the right choice, though. She's like, I can't, you know. In, in fair Mon Calamari, where we set our tail, uh, Mon Calamari, <laughs> whatever the planet's called. I also just need to point out, uh, what is Bra Bryce Dallas Howard the name of the, the director? director? Yes. Okay. Uh, I also just need to point out, Bryce Dallas Howard, the director of this... Um, so she directed this thing with this beautiful little romance between these <laughs> two amphibious creatures. She also directed the episodes in season two where the frog creatures that he was helping to transport got together and had another like beautiful little romantic moment. I think that the shape of water had a profound effect on her because <laughs> the amount of underwater creatures having love scenes we're getting is pretty high. She uh, wasn't all in Bryce the Dallas shape Howard. of water, babe. She was in Lady in the Water, which is an M Night movie. The oh no, no, I'm, I'm just saying she watched oh. it at home and <laughs> oh, was like, I, was like, I need fish to have <laughs> romance, you know? Like, <laughs> it is cute. <laughs> so, but she has directed some of my favorite episodes. She directed the episode where we met all the uh, the owl clan. Is mm -hmm. that what? what the are night they? owls, yeah, yeah. That, uh, and it is funny, like good for her. Yeah. No, I, I think that's one thing that, you know, we talk about here a lot. And I know you guys talk about it on, on Strand and Panda and MCU cast from time to time. You know, the representation matters. And that's not just in front of the camera, but behind it. And I think that, like, you know, I, I, I think everyone has done a great job telling Bo-Katan's story. But having it be heard, you know, be more involved with the, the, the episodes, as you said, that are very specifically focused on Bo, I kind of love. Yeah. Uh, and then just... And I don't even like when we had that other episode that kind of took away from the Mandalorian. I was like, OK, let's not do this mm -hmm. because we don't get that many episodes. This isn't, you know, the Boba Fett show. I don't please right. don't take away. I have zero problem with Bo-Katan taking center stage in these yeah. episodes because I just love her so much. 
Well, and because it is, I mean, it both, you know, it, it's her taking center stage. She's wonderful, but it's very much part of of Din's story as well. Yes. You know, and it's, I mean, the show isn't called Din Djarin. The show is called The Mandalorian. It's about the Mandalorian, Mandalorians. The people, the planet. And, and there's a thing that I've seen come up a bunch, which is this idea that I think actually Matt and Jeff may have argued about this on an MCU cast. I'm not sure. Um, and maybe you were involved. You can tell me. But I think there's this concept that your main character has to go through a story arc of some kind in every movie, every show, etc. And I'm not sure I agree with that. I think sometimes, like, you know, Paul and I have talked about this, that sometimes the problem is like a Batman movie is always either him becoming Batman, him questioning if he wants to be Batman, or him deciding to stop being Batman. Instead of just a movie where he's Batman at the start and he's Batman at the end and he just does Batman things throughout the movie. Well, Batman or, Returns, he kind of takes a back seat. Yeah. The film. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I, that's, that's my point. Because in Batman, yeah, Batman Returns, a lot of it's... Uh, yeah, I, I, the, Batman Returns, I think actually we talked about that when you were on that episode. Yeah, like, he's that's, Batman and then Batman. <laughs> yeah, he's just Batman. And that's... Movies don't that's do that very often. That's so goddamn good. <laughs> right? And I don't have any problem with this show being like... Din right now doesn't really know what he's doing. He's with his son. He wants to be with his son. He he wanted redemption. He's found that. And now he's trying to figure out his place with things. And it doesn't have to be all about him soul searching and all this. It can be him about being like, hey, I used to be so dedicated to the Children of the Watch. I still am. But maybe there's this larger Mandalorian cause I can be dedicated to. I, I don't know. How, what have you felt about sort of Din's evolution, this this his story arc, such that there is one in this season? I feel like he's a lot more open minded. Like we started the beginning the whole time. I'm like, you do not have to go get in this water and prove anything to this people. But yeah. if he didn't, we wouldn't have seen, uh, you know, big monster and right. Bo-Katan wouldn't have been set on her path now. So it all, mm -hmm. you know, it all meant something. And I do feel like he's starting to be loosey goosey with the rules. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So we are like, it, it's a season three, right? Yep this season threes of shows usually are that growing period where right. it's going to base what happens for the rest of the show. Um, so yeah, I think it's interesting that like they're going to go get more Mandalorians. We'll see how many come back with them. And it's two very good examples of, you know, super culty and Hey man, yeah. come and join our fucking <laughs> hangout, man. We're just going to talk, you know? Yeah. It's like, and uh yeah we'll see where it goes yeah because we're gonna get all different kinds of mandalorians because of that but right it's all going to lead to something yeah which yeah, is that, such a basic thing to say i'm sorry but it's but it's true and i think that that's i i don't know I, to me the basic part i don't want to be being critical of others but i just think to me the idea of like a story has a, a main character has to do this or a story has to have like this much focus on the person in the name of your show. Like that's it just I don't want I don't want writers to be that constrained. I want them just to say, right. here's the story we have. We're gonna tell you the story we have. And the characters who should be on screen are gonna be on screen and that's gonna be okay. And I think it just gets more characters to become beloved like like I said, I don't know who Bo Katan is before the show. Right. And quickly became one of my favorite characters. Mm -hmm. And I would actually probably watch uh -huh, said cartoon <laughs> show. <laughs> animation, animation. <laughs> animation. <laughs> Sorry, cartoon. That We don't use that word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I feel like I am lacking character information for mm -hmm. how amazing she is. Like, I see her, the scar on her forehead. And yeah. I don't know where that came from. Yeah, you just want to know. You want yeah, to know. it's. I, I definitely hear you hear what you're saying there. And I think that sometimes they're like, this is going to be heresy. I know, so don't matter, Jeff. If you're listening, please turn this off. I like the Iron Man movies. I had zero interest in Captain America or Thor until I watched Avengers, and I was like, oh, okay. Like, I think I actually watched like 15 minutes of Captain America and turned it off because I was really bored. The first one. And <clears throat> Thor, I just had no interest in. And then I watched them in Avengers and I was like, okay, these are such interesting characters. 
I okay, uh, I, and you know, neither of them is my favorite movie, although I've come to appreciate them both a lot more. But yeah, it was because I watched them in Avengers, and I think there's nothing wrong with like, you don't need to watch everything. But then if you something later happens, you learn more <laughs> about the character, and you're like, okay, now I'll go back and I'll just check out the things about them. That's very interesting. Um, I love the first. I like see. Oh, it's that's, that's hard. I love those two movies a lot uh, mm-hmm. for different reasons, but I will say Ken agrees with you and he mm. does not really like the first Thor. And he has, he's like, it's just like, there's no stakes. It's, it's just kind of, you know, whatever. Yeah. There's no really mean villain. Cause it, you can say it's Loki, but it's not. Yeah. Um, and Captain America, I just, I love the first Captain America, but I didn't like it the first time I saw it. So I completely mm, understand. That's fair. That's fair. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I love a team up and I feel like this yeah. whole season has been a really fun team up. And how many times have we asked where her other people were? And I was really happy to see uh, the girl who had the braids. Yes. Yes. I don't know her name, but I was like, yes, there she is. Because mm-hmm. I was wondering, I'm like, where is everybody? <clears throat> yeah, it was great to see her. I think the guy who they were with, I think he was killed in something, but I'm not positive about that. I'll try to look that up before next episode. Um, like I said, I was a little bit blown away by the 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 Jacko, the, the Lizzo, and the <laughs> Jack Black, and then the... It was so amazing, because you get both of those two, and then Christopher Lloyd's character speaks before he's on screen. And his voice is just so recognizable. It's immediately like, yeah. oh. And I remember just being like, I was watching it at two in the morning, everyone else in my house was asleep, and I had to just like <laughs> not shout out loud, like, Doc Brown is here! Um... I waited till today to watch it and I got spoiled that Lizzo and uh, yeah. Jack Black were on because of like stupid BuzzFeed or like Rolling Stones or like a mm-hmm. people who should know better. Yeah. And I'm like, I know it's my fault, but I didn't read the article. I just knew that they were going to be there. <laughs> yeah, I think unfortunately we're at a point where people don't see casting news as something to spoil, which which disappoints yeah. me because I do think, yeah, it's great to see who those things are. Um, like, I don't know if you followed any of this, but I know the Barbie movie, like they did a whole set of ads of like the different actors from the show as though, you know, as like, this is the, this Barbie and this is the, that yeah. Barbie. Oh yeah. And <clears throat> then a lot of my friends and other people on Twitter started doing their own with various oh, yeah. actors. If, if you go to Bill and Ash Terror Theater at Instagram, you'll see many horror themed ones today. Awesome. Well, I will check those out. Probably gone by this time, but still. <laughs> but what I love about it is because there's so many, I don't actually have any idea which one are real and who's in the movie and who's right. not. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty I know sh- it's Ryan Gosling. Nah, don't tell me, don't tell me. Uh, what do you mean everybody knew that Ryan Gosling was in it? I didn't know. You don't um, know anybody who's in the Barbie movie? I, I know Margot Robbie. But no, remember, the, I'm the person who just avoids all spoilers, all oh. trailers, all. So, OK. Well, it's, now I know it's Ryan Gosling. He's Ken. You know who you know who he is. I, I just learned he's, he's Ken. But, you know, like... yeah, it's, it's a very important name to my heart. <laughs> oh, yes, that is very fair. That's very fair. Um, but, but yeah. So where do you see his bleach blonde hair? I mean, spoilers. But as a hairdresser, like it is. Perfect. Compared to Chris Hemsworth's uh, wig in Thor, it's a little bit better. It, it's not a wig. They used his real hair and they actually bleached it. Okay. I am. Okay. It, it, it looks, it, it, I don't want to say it looks great for him, mm-hmm. but the color process on it is perfect. Perfect. Well done. Well done. Well, he was probably getting his hair bleached every three days and colored. That's impressive. That's impressive. Uh, it's, it's insane. <laughs> All right. Well, so back to this though. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, so I think Lizzo was great. Jack Black was great. Chris, did, did, for any of them, did they pull you out? Like, I think that's another complaint that I hear, but I just don't. I mean, for a second, I was mm-hmm. like, what are we doing here? But like I said, if you throw Jack Black into anything, I don't care. Yeah. His beard was real and amazing as like it's its own character. Mm-hmm. And it was just, you know, it made me laugh. So I didn't care. And I, I think they did. the. I think if you had put them as if one of them was like the leader of a planet they had to like have a fight with or anything serious, I would have been like, come on. But it makes it sound like they're going to set them up to go back there at some point. Mm-hmm. Cause they're like, you can come here at any time. Yeah. And they're always in trouble. So <laughs> having yeah. a place to go to. Right. And like, <laughs> yeah, like having Jack Black and Lizzo there for that. It just, it, 
if they had been anything more serious, I don't think it would have worked. But for this episode, and where it was so Grogu campy. Grogu got knighted. Grogu got Grogu knighted. Grogu got knighted. It made no sense whatsoever, but I didn't care. No, it was so good. Didn't care. It was cute. Yeah. He waved bye. Yeah. I My favorite thing that Grogu does is wave bye. Wave bye. Yeah. Oh, my other second thing besides the dark saber of my new favorite thing from Star Wars is that the droids get drunk. Yes. Yes. We did oh, see some great droid stuff my in this. God. I, I will say that's perhaps <laughs> the one thing where I was a little. Well, OK, first of all, I, I kind of almost blocked this out to not talk about because, you know, <laughs> I, you haven't listened to my to me talk about the animated stuff. I find the phrase. That begin. It is just two words that both have the letter R to begin with them. Um, the, the Roger Roger that battle droids say. Roger Roger. To be so horrific and awful. And I hate it. And so when I saw a live action battle droid again, I was like, it, I, I had my hand over the pause button. I was like, if you say Roger Roger, I might be like, Ashley, you're on your own. I'm not watching this show. <laughs> but they, they didn't give us a Roger Roger. Instead, they gave us the battle droids and watching Mando just be like, hmm, I'll find out who they are. Kick this one, kick this one, <laughs> kick this one. I felt a little bad for the battle droids, but like it was it was hilarious to watch. It was, they're all very sassy. Yeah. Like all the droids had a very sassy attitude. And then I wasn't expecting that one to be cool because it yep. was definitely very sassy at the bar. And then it's like, no. We all don't want to get typecasted. Mm -hmm. And it, it was a little nod to us. Like we should be worried about what happens when we let yeah. a, if we do AI and we let AI take over our lives or even thinking about the internet and taking it away from us, society would collapse. Like mm -hmm. I, I see you star Wars. I see you putting your little, yeah, you know, uh, which, which <laughs> but I it needs to be discussed. It's scary. Which I think is a little why that one scene felt a little off of like, Hey, look, Sentience is sentience. Droids are people. We should we should not just be laughing at them. Oh look, Din Djarin's kicking all of them. Isn't that funny? He's just kicking. But it was really knees. funny. And and knowing how much trauma droids have caused him, like made his line of he, like. Go ahead. He he dislikes droids. He really does. He really he does. really does. He when people talk, it's like talking to me about children. He's mm. like, you you said droids. You had me at droids. Yeah. I'm like he. And even he's had some amazing relationships with, you know, a droid or two, maybe three. He he bonded with IG. I think that red droid, though, might have gotten left behind on Mandalore. You know, like. Oh, no. <laughs> I have no idea. So. Oh, yeah. Where is that one? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, we have some bonus content. We're going to talk about horror movies that are coming out soon because Ashley is our queen of scream around these parts. But Ashley, <laughs> uh, for those who aren't patrons, aren't sticking around to the end, where can they find more of you? Uh, you can find me at the Stranded Panda Network, uh, strandedpanda.com, uh, Bill and Ashley's Terror Theater, where we talk about all things horror, or the Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast, where we talk about all things Marvel. Yeah, all of those are fantastic podcasts. Definitely check all those out. Uh, there's a new podcast also starting on Stranded Panda that's going to be all about like news of new things coming out. Uh, to me, it sounds like a spoiler fest, so I'm not going to go anywhere near it. But I think for those who, <laughs> you know, they're very good about like they don't want to talk about like things that people shouldn't know yet. So it's only about like official news and stuff like that. But they're great. Definitely check that out. The the Scream Queen, uh, the the horror podcast is really good. Uh, I've really enjoyed some of uh, some of your episodes, even about movies that I would never watch in a million years. So <laughs> it's definitely worth checking out. And of course, this is a ethical panda podcast this and superhero ethics are both things that i do under theethicalpanda.com go to our website you find all the episodes but most importantly you find ways to contact us Facebook, face back facebook twitter tiktok all the things follow us it's really great i love inter i've been interacting with people a lot on twitter on tiktok love to hear more of your thoughts there and of course just send an email and uh, a message and we'll read it on air so we love all that and of course if you want to help support us become a patron you get free content you get ad free content all that good stuff so on behalf of myself and Ashley, thank you all so much for listening. We have spoken. Bye. All right. So not going to hit stop. Uh, nope. Not hit stop. Not I did it. <laughs> Wait, you and, but I still fucked you up. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so you did or you didn't hit stop? Okay. I didn't. Okay. So you're going. Cool. Patrons, you get to enjoy that bit of humor. Um, patrons, welcome back. Uh, so, Ashley, I know we're starting to... There is snow outside my house because I live in the frozen tundra of Minnesota. It's 80 degrees here in I Philadelphia. I know. So most of the rest of the world, we're starting to move into spring. We're starting to think about summer. 
Uh, hopefully, uh, George R.R. R. Martin will follow us soon uh, into spring. But summer is obviously <laughs> when the big movies come out. And I'm kind of curious from your standpoint, both MCU, but also horror movies. What are the movies that we know are coming out this year that you're really excited about? Uh, well, just in about three weeks, we have Evil Dead Rise, mm. which is going to be interesting. Um, it's taking the Evil Dead series out of the woods and bringing it into a high rise, which is something that uh, Dario Argento did in the 70s with a film called Demons. Uh, Demons 2 specifically mm. was where a high rise in a metropolitan city gets infested with, you know, Evil Dead style demons. So that is... Probably not the plot of this one, okay. but this is going to bring it more into a, uh, you know, city landscape. Now, kind of like the new Scream. Will that have the person who some folks might know as your namesake? The person I know is Sam Axe, but is best known as the chin that can kill Bruce Campbell. Is he going to be in that? <laughs> no, he's executive producer, but he's not in this one. It's from the same people who made the 2013 uh, Evil Dead, not remake, but... Okay. Uh, namesake, it's not, I don't really like that one very much. Okay. So I am hesitant about this, but it does look like a lot of fun from the trailers. Um, you know, the right people are producing and Bruce Campbell's involved, but he's not in it. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll see. We'll okay. see how that goes. <laughs> and I will say, uh, you guys recently put up an episode about uh, the Evil Dead movie. I think you did a couple episodes on the different Evil Dead We're movies. going through, yeah. We have Army of Darkness coming out uh, within the next two weeks. And then we'll have nice. the new... We're going to do an episode about the 2013 and the Ash vs. Evil Dead TV show in kind of like one episode to kind of talk about those. And then we'll have the new nice. uh, movie review. Nice. Definitely worth checking out. What else is coming up that you have thoughts about? Uh, I guess it's hard because there's not... Um, are so quiet they they don't really let you know until a couple months before what's coming out i know that there is a uh, salem's lot coming okay. out um and gary doberman who was my best friend's roommate in college who wrote oh, annabelle nice. yeah he wrote annabelle and the nun and he wrote this new salem's lot so that'll be really interesting and it's funny because evil dead stole salem's lot slot for release so that got pushed back from april april 21st to tbd so I don't have a lot of information, but mm -hmm. that's when that one's coming out soon. I will say we talked last week about how with Star Wars and the MCU and DC, they announce these movies years in advance. And then sometimes they don't happen. Things change. It can be frustrating. I, I kind of miss the idea of like what you're saying horror still is of like you find out about something when it's a couple months away from coming out. So, yeah. It, and it's like they don't tell you tickets go on sale, maybe like. Today, Evil Dead tickets went on sale and that movie comes out in like two weeks. Wow. Where awesome. you see Marvel movies, they give it like a month. Yeah. And I guess with like, I think of summer as the big release time. But for horror movies, I mean, the big release time is, is around Halloween, right? It's Halloween and Christmas. OK. Yeah. I like the Christmas. Horror one. has a very special place uh -huh. <laughs> in the hearts of Christmas because it's like, you know, you're with your families and you just need this release. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You need a, a, something that's not quite as wholesome. Something that's a little bit, you know, it's like the exorcist came out the day after Christmas. Really? Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. I love that. I mean, didn't one of the Godfather, the third Godfather movie come out on Christmas Day or something? Christmas like that? is a good time because everybody I I've never it's not part of like my family's thing or uh -huh. But a lot of people go to the movie theaters on Christmas, and I had no idea yeah. that was like a big thing. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, but lots of people do it. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Any? Uh, so I know Guardians is coming out pretty soon. Um, Guardians is May fifth. I got my ticks. Nice, nice. That that I don't. Again, not take anything away for whatever reason. Like I still haven't seen Ant Man. I have. I don't know if I'm gonna see Guardians. We'll see. I. So the fact that they keep. Uh, posting a lot of rocket in the uh advertising mm -hmm. um makes he like he's my favorite guardian like rock i'm like if i'm an mcu character like i think i'm dark phoenix no i'm i'm rocket yeah like bradley <laughs> cooper he's from philly he talks like me he sounds like me we had the same sense of humor mm -hmm. <laughs> so you will never steal me... my prosthetic leg <laughs> we'll see <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna get that leg. <laughs> um I'm just interested to see if the movie's going to be more based around him and like his story. Yeah. And I just, just hope he doesn't, you know, 
no perishing raccoons. I don't want to see that. Mm -hmm. But because they're like making it so heartfelt about him, I don't think that's what's going to happen. But I am very excited for this Guardians movie since I think we're finally going to have one based around Rocket. I I because I admit I'm I'm just not a Peter Quill fan, so I would really love to see that. That would definitely make me want to go. Chris Pratt, there, there's okay, there's he he's like a like a, a mas- magic witch. Mm-hmm. Um, he's so charming. There's nothing I can do. I could be like I don't agree with half of the thing, more than half of the things that he I don't or like anything. I don't know the guy. Yeah, but when I see him on film playing someone, I'm like, God, you're just so charming. Yeah, but nothing I can do. There's just nothing I can do. Just don't get it. But I mean, he's no, he's such a jerk in Guardians, too. Yeah. Like, he really is. He's written terribly. Yeah. <laughs> you like, I don't know how you like it. I'm like, uh, did you see the way he spun her? I'm such a <laughs> hopeless romantic. I can't do anything. You know, we, yeah, we I, it's, yeah. I don't know what it is. Me and Katie have talked about it extensively. I, I've not. Vin Diesel has had a very up and down movie career, and I will I will stand by Chronicles <laughs> of Riddick. I will stand by Pitch Black. I will stand by every one of the the Fast and Furious movies. We all have our weaknesses. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything? Any? Um, are we gonna get any more horror TV shows? Because I know we haven't seen like, but like we definitely yeah, seen oh, yeah. some of them. There is on HBO. They're bringing a uh, a. Pennywise uh, origin story. I think it's called Welcome to Dairy. Oh, and Pennywise, those don't know, is the clown in it. And there is on one of the channels, it's going to be a origin for uh, Friday the 13th. So like a Jason. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the, I know that there's a new season, maybe right now, of the Chucky series. People really like that. I haven't seen it myself, but okay. Bill says it's very good. But yeah, so horror's definitely, okay. we ain't going nowhere. Okay. So yeah, we got Friday the 13th, and yeah, welcome to Derry, I believe, is the city. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's a city in Maine where it's supposed to take place. So Cool, cool. Well, lots to look forward <laughs> to. Uh, we'll definitely check out your podcast for that, but we might get you back on for, for some of those discussions. Certainly, I'm really, I think we're supposed to get a new season of The Boys sometime soon, which I'm really excited to. I'm excited. Whatever combination of us is going to be talking about that, I'll be happy to, to be joining with y'all. And for you all in the audience, um, what are things you're really excited about? Over on Superhero Ethics, we I'm about to put up an episode about Shadow and Bone. We've done some more stuff on The Last of Us. Um, I've been playing through The Last of Us Part 2 video game, which I will say no spoilers about, but oh my... G- <laughs> I, I remember when video games were fun. Mm. Apparently now video games are about emotional torture. Um, oh and, no. and just all, all the feels. And like when I, I didn't play Pac-Man for the feels. I didn't play Zelda so I could have <laughs> like deep emotions about... The, the bushes I was lighting on fire to see if there was uh, rupees under them. I just lit them on fire. But this is the world we live in now. So, Ashley, thank you so much for being a part of this. To all of our listeners, our patrons, thank you all so much. Have a great day. Bye. And... Bye. What's my saying? Uh, Be cool, cats. Have a good Passover. Happy Easter. All that. Be cool, cats. <laughs> I like that one, too. We're out. <laughs>